Welcome back, Clash Cut Crew, to another week of Clash Cut Picks. It was a very sad week for me last week. Fantasy football stuff. I really don't want to talk about it. I'm going to roll the intro to ignore it. If the audio sounds a little different this week, that's because I'm trying out my new road mic. Got this for Christmas from Grandma, and I really like it, and I hope you guys really like it. It also feels weird not having a mic in front of me. It's just odd. Thursday Night Football, the Browns and the Jets. The Browns offense has just been on fire since Joe Flacco stepped in, and the Jets, they barely won last week. They had a commanding lead, almost let the commanders come back and take it from them, but they were able to win the game. With how good the Browns have been ever since Joe Flacco stepped in. I, I can't believe I'm saying that in 2023. Anyways, I still think it is going to be hard for the Jets to compete with the hot streak of the Browns. And I think their defense will be pretty solid, but I just don't think it'll be enough. I think the Browns come on top in this one, winning 27-13. Oh man, I just had a bag of sunflower seeds, so some of the shells are in my throat. That's why I was talking a little funny right there. <laughs> Lions and Cowboys. The Lions last week were able to pull out a win against the Vikings, and the Cowboys, they took an L to the Dolphins. They did fight all game long, but between these two teams, I think the Lions have had a great season. They've showed that they can contend. They've been good on defense and offense. The Cowboys have succeeded with that as well, but to a whole nother level. Dak Prescott has stepped up to an MVP caliber quarterback and the defense has been solid all season long. I think this week they are going to cause havoc for the Lions. I think it'll be close, but I just think that Dallas is a better team overall and I think the Cowboys win 31-24. Dolphins and Ravens. The Ravens absolutely tore apart the 49ers last week. Embarrassed them. They had no problem handling San Francisco. In Miami, they fought and they picked up the dub against the Cowboys, winning late, staying in there, proving they can be a playoff caliber team and that they deserve to be in the spot they're in. However, this week, I think it will be a battle. I think it'll be a hard fought dub for the Ravens. I think the Ravens are rolling so good right now, especially after last week. I think the defense, the offense is all clicking, and I think they will pull out this victory against the Dolphins 30 to 23. Bills and Patriots, both of these teams barely won last week. Bills did it against the Chargers, Patriots did it against the Broncos, and the Bills I think are on the upswing towards the late end of the season. They still need to get their receivers more involved. That is something that would definitely improve their game and get them back on track. With the Patriots, they are just trying to survive till the end of the season. They are out of contention. They are just trying to spoil dreams for other teams in the league. But I don't think that'll be the case this week. I think the Bills are starting to catch fire. And I think they're finally starting to get some momentum. And I think against the Patriots is a perfect stepping stone to increasing that as the end of the season approaches. So give me the Bills winning this one, 33-13. Falcons and Bears. The Bears picked up the win against the Cardinals last week. Falcons picked up up the win against the Colts. One of those games from last week that I absolutely hate because it affected me very badly in fantasy. Anyways, ever since Justin Fields came back to playing quarterback for the Bears, it has been a great game for them in the offensive part of the field and he continues to roll it. It seems like he is getting his swagger back. He's starting to feel more comfortable back in the position and I think that'll continue this week. Atlanta's offense definitely under Taylor Heineke performs better but I think they'll keep it close. I don't think they'll win. I think the Bears pick up the victory 27 to 20. Texans and Titans. The Texans last week took an L to the Browns and the Titans took an L to my Seahawks. The Titans look like they're going to start Ryan Tannehill again based on reports that I've read. And for the Texans, whether it is the backup or C.J. Stroud, who could possibly be returning this week from what I've read, I think the Texans are going to be fine. I think they both mesh with the quarterbacks that are inserted. And I think the Texans are going to get back on track and try to keep their playoff hopes alive. I think the Texans win this game 28-13. to It's just the Titans when they're under Ryan Tannehill. To me, they don't perform as good. Speaking of teams that performed good last week, Raiders and Colts. The Raiders, their defense was a huge factor in why they won the game against the Chiefs last week. And the Colts, they were nowhere to be seen, which affected me very badly. Don't want to talk about it. The Colts were beat by the Falcons. And the Raiders, ever since that huge 
63 point game have been rolling. They have looked good and I think that continues here against the Colts. The team that is trying to fight for playoffs, I think the Raiders are going to play spoiler. I think their defense has been stepping up and been very good. Ever since Antonio Pierce took over as head coach, things have been on the up for the Raiders and I think that continues with their overall game. I think the Raiders win this one 24-20. Panthers in Jacksonville. Panthers almost beat the Packers last week and the Jags, they did not win against the Buccaneers last week. It has been a downhill slump for the Jacksonville Jaguars, sitting pretty at the number one seed, and now they've been on a losing streak that could cause them to potentially miss playoffs. Against the Panthers, though, that is a team where you could turn it around. However, their recent games, the Panthers, have been pretty good. They've stayed in games, they've won a game, and I think it'll be some good competition, but I think the Jags get back on track. I think they pull off this victory and find their momentum again, winning 27 to 23. Rams and Giants, the Rams got a dominant win over the Saints last week. Their offense looked very good. The Giants, they almost came back late in the game against the Eagles. They didn't start out so hot, but the more the game went on, the more the momentum was shifting sides. It was not enough for the Giants though. The Rams are looking like a team that could find their way into playoffs late in the season. And it could be a sneaky team, a team you don't want to face. This offense is look better and better every week as the young skill players keep stepping up and I think that'll be the case. I think the defense will not be able to keep up with these young stars like Puka Nakua and Kyron Williams and a veteran quarterback Matthew Stafford leading them is a little nice cherry on top for that offense and I think the Rams are going to win this one 31-17. Eagles and Cardinals. The Eagles did pull out the victory last week. They were able to hang on. The Cardinals did take another L. Even though the offense can stay in some games for the Cardinals. The defense is the factor on why they are losing. They're giving up too many points. They are not able to stop these offenses, really no matter which team it is. And I think the Eagles are just getting these games. They're going to keep helping them get back on track. They saw that last week with the Giants. They're getting it this week with the Cardinals. I think Jalen Hurts just needs to find his momentum once again, and he will start moving. He will start getting the ball out to the right guys, and the whole offense will be able to click as one unit and I think that will allow the Eagles to win this week 33 to 23. Saints and Buccaneers we saw the Saints take an L last week and the Buccaneers take a dub. The Buccaneers have been on the upswing. They have looked so good in recent weeks. Baker Mayfield has been balling which is allowing the whole offensive game to ball. The run attack, the pass attack, it is all meshing, it is all going, it is on fire right now and that is allowing everybody to shine with the Saints, they really only shine for a good 15 minutes of the entire game, like one quarter, and then the rest of the game, they're kind of mid. They don't really show. And the Buccaneers, they've just been too hot lately to handle. And I think that is why I have them coming out on top this week. That offense has been so good, which allows the rest of the team to perform to its best ability. So give me them winning 30-19. to 19. 49ers in Washington. 49ers lost very badly to the Ravens last week. And that made me lose in fantasy. So thank you so much for that. That was honestly the only reason was that game. Oh my god, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And the Commanders almost came back. They did not. The 49ers really need to get back on track after last week. What they showed the entire nation was bad, dude. It was horrendous to look at. And they need a rebound, a bounce back performance. And against the Commanders, I think that is a team you can do that against. The Commanders were almost beat badly by the Jets, but they did not allow that to happen. They made it close in the end. I don't think that would be the case this week against the 49ers. I think they get back on track. I think they're angry. They're pissed. They are embarrassed. So give me the 49ers winning 33-23. to Seahawks and Steelers. My Seahawks won again late in the game in a final minute touchdown. It was beautiful this time led by Geno Smith. And the Steelers, they all of a sudden went crazy beating the Bengals. I don't think that happens again. I think their offense will find struggles here against Seattle's defense. They know how to stay in it till the end of the game. They've proven that 
for many years now, no matter who the quarterback's been, they always fight. They always make sure it's down to the last second till the clock hits zero. And I think we've been on such a good ride lately that the Seahawks offense will be able to get the job done and it will make the Steelers offense struggle. So give me the Seahawks winning this one, 27 to 20. Mid matchup of the week, we have the Chargers and the Broncos. These two teams are starting backup quarterbacks, Jared Stidham, Easton Stick. Not going to be the most thrilling game out there, so let's just cut straight to the chase. I'm giving this one to the Broncos, 23-17. Bengals and Chiefs. The Bengals, they were beat bad last week. The Chiefs were also embarrassed and beat bad last week. Usually when these two teams meet up, it's thrilling, it's exciting, it's a game of the week. But with the way the Chiefs have been playing, no Joe Burrow, he's injured. It's Jake Browning, a quarterback. Who knows what this game will be, honestly. The Chiefs, honestly, could lose to a backup quarterback Bengals led team. I don't know with what happened last week and what's been happening in recent weeks. The Chiefs have been very unpredictable. I think they will come into this game better than they did against the Ravens. They were killing themselves with turnovers. I don't think that'll be the case against the Bengals. I think they stay in this. I think they fight and they barely win. Not confidently, but they do get the victory and they do get a little bit of happiness being like, okay, damn, that's step one. Now we just got to keep going and be the dominant team we know we can be. I think the Chiefs win this one 24 to 23. Packers and Vikings. The Packers won last week barely. And the Vikings, they lost against the Lions. We got a division matchup going on here. It has been a roller coaster season for the Packers. They've had games where they're like, oh my God, Jordan Love's the next Aaron Rodgers. And then they've had games where they're like, Jordan Love, we want you out of Green Bay right now. And the Vikings, they've suffered a ton of injuries. I think they are going to cause a little bit of a struggle for Jordan Jordan Love, but I think with the offense the Packers have, they will be able to balance it out. I think they get their young receivers back. I think with Romeo Dobbs and Jalen Reed, they will be able to get the attack going with them and the run game as well with Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, balance them out against the Vikings, who haven't been most impressive this year. Like I said, they've been banged up. I think it'll be close, but I think the Packers pull this one off and win 31 to 23. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This is the first time I have tried out this new mic. I hope you guys like it. I hope it sounds good. I really, really do hope it sounds good. And it's still weird. There's no mic in front of me. I, I, I feel like I'm too free. I feel like I'm not in like my little office bubble. Like, all right, hi, welcome. Can't wait to try these out in vlogs and other content. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I, if you made it to the end of this video, then I want you to comment who you think the MVP of the season is. We're approaching the end of the season and it's time to start thinking about it. I got this, you got this, we all got this. Like the video, subscribe, tell your mom, your dad, grandma, grandma, pets, friends, my sister, and uncle, everybody, you know to subscribe to Austin Clutch if they haven't already. And I will see you next time.